Okay, so now we've got part two of the motion problems, and blissfully, these I have three more problems for you, and they are actually shorter than the others. So the next one, Beth and Mike leave school. traveling in opposite directions. Okay, that word opposite is a clue to which of the two equations we're going to be using. That generally means the two distances are going to add up to equal some distance given in the problem. But you never know, so we'll have to wait till we draw our diagram. Mike averages six kilometers per hour more than Beth. So interestingly they are comparing Mike's rate to Beth's rate. If they are eighteen kilometers apart After 1.5 hours, what is the rate of each? Okay. So they leave school. So let's draw a picture, and that's my beautiful school, and we've got Beth going one direction, and we've got Mike going in another direction. <coughs> now, we know that Mike averages six kilometers more than Beth. Since Beth is mentioned at the end, then we're going to let Beth's rate be x. And Mike's rate is going to be 6 more than that. So we're going to take x plus 6. Now, what does it say about time? And it actually never mentions time, but they're leaving school traveling in opposite directions. So the assumption is they're leaving at the same time. So time for both of them is going to be, um, oh, wait a second. It does tell us what their time is. We want to know at 1.5, okay? Now the other thing it tells us is it wants to know when they are 18 kilometers apart. So definitely fits the bill of distance of one plus distance of the other equals the distance number, a total number given in the problem. So when are they going to be a total of 18 kilometers apart? So let's go ahead and do our chart so we can get our d values to plug into the equation. We already got the 18 going for d total, but we've got Beth and Mike rate times time is equal to distance. We've decided that Beth is going to have a rate of x and her time is 1.5 so we get 1.5x and we've got Mike's rate is x plus 6 and his time is 1.5 so his distance would be the product x plus 6. So don't forget we take the rate value, multiply it by the time value to get the distance value. So what I'm going to do is take the distance values and plug them in here. And then we're going to take this total distance, bam, and put it right there. So here comes the equation. 1.5x plus 1.5 times the quantity 
x plus 6 equals 18. Now you've got a couple of options of how you handle this problem. Uh, you can uh, just deal with the decimals or you can multiply everything um, on both sides by 10 to move the decimal point over. But I'm just going to roll with it and deal with the decimals. So I get 1.5x and then I distribute and I get 1.5x plus, let's see, we get 30, we get 90, but we're going to have one digit after the decimal point, so it's really 9. So I'm not even going to worry about that 0. So I'm going to combine like terms on the left, and I'm going to do opposite operations to get the constants on the right. And 1.5 and 1.5 blissfully makes 3x. And over here on the right side, we have a 9. Divide both sides by 3, and we get x equals 3. So x represents Beth's rate. So we're going to say Beth equals 3. Now we need to create a rate label. So we look at the labels that they used for distance and for time. And that's going to become our label, kilometers per hour. To get Mike's time, we are going to plug back into his definition. So we have 3 plus 6 equals 9. And so we can write his answer is Mike equals 9 kilometers per hour. And those are the two answers. All right, we've got another problem. Cindy begins biking. to the park at two, 20 kilometers per hour at noon. And it says Dean leaves from the same point Fifteen minutes later to catch her. If Dean is biking at twenty four kilometers per hour. How long will it take him to catch Cindy? Okay, so basically we have this gal that starts off. She has a friend who starts off from the same point she started off, but he starts off later. But if you notice, he's traveling faster. So eventually, he's going to catch up to where she is. So we've got a park, and we have some unknown destination. I'll say new spot. We have Cindy. She starts from the park, and she's going to be at some spot at the same time that Dean will be. So if you can see from that picture, they will be at the same location at an exact period of time. And that's the time frame we're going to work with in this problem. So you should be able to see just from that alone that we're going to be saying the distance of one equals the distance of the other. So let's add some data. We know Cindy's rate. 20 kilometers. Oh, I don't want to write that in there, sorry. I'll erase that. 
she's going 20 kilometers and we know that Dean is going at 24 now time gets to be a little weird because basically we want to know when or how long it's going to take him to catch up so we have a couple options here if it's Dean's time that we're interested in it makes the most amount of sense to me that his time is going to be the X so whoever you're trying to solve for try to let them have the variable X so let's go back and let's think about it we've got a little issue of time here because normally speaking time is in hours because if you look at the label there in um, rate it's hours but Dean left 15 minutes later than Cindy did but I cannot deal with time X in hours and minutes from this extra bit so what we're going to do is to take this and convert it into hours so one hour is 60 minutes so that allows me and I'm going to leave it just as a fraction as a quarter of an hour so let's go back to Cindy so Cindy left before Dean did and if Dean's time was X then hers has to be longer and it's longer by that 15 minutes converted to hours which would be one-fourth so those are the data that I'm going to use to do my chart so I've got Cindy and Dean rate times time times distance and Cindy's rate is 20 her time is x plus one-fourth her distance is 20 times the quantity x plus one-fourth Dean's rate is 24 his time is x and his distance would be the product because remember always the formula rate times time equals distance so now we're going to take these d values and plug them in here. So our equation is 24x equals 20 times the quantity x plus 1 fourth. Now in case you haven't noticed it, I'm always kind of eyeballing who has the bigger x and whoever that person is is the one I write on the left. That's just what I'm doing. So we have 24x equals 20x plus 20 times 1 fourth is 5. Subtract 20x from both sides. We get 4x equals 5. Divide by 4. And as we've said before, we're not going to leave an improper fraction for time because people don't get that, so we're going to change it to a mixed number. And 4 goes into 5 once with 1 left over. Now, the question says, how long will it take him, Dean, to catch Cindy? Well, that's exactly the answer we just solved for so it would take him one and a quarter hours. Now the question you might ask yourself is, why on earth did they tell us that Cindy left at noon? Why didn't they just say, Cindy left the park? And then say, Dean leaves the same point 15 minutes later. Well, the reason why they do that is in some problems, they'll ask, actually ask, at what time did Dean catch Cindy? So if we add an hour and a quarter, to noon, that would take us to 1.15 would be the time on the clock that he would catch up with her. But this problem didn't ask for at what time, it just said how long. Okay, one more for you. We've got this unfortunate soul mark. A mark drove his car to a garage. at 48 kilometers per hour and then here's the sad part walked back home
at 8 kilometers per hour. The drive took 10 minutes less than the walk home. How far did Mark walk? And for how long? Okay, so we've got home, we've got garage. And by garage, they mean not a parking structure, but most likely a place where he has to leave his car to get it fixed. So our two quote-unquote objects are drive and walk. He drove from home to the garage. He walked from the garage to home. So again, it should be pretty obvious from that picture that the two distances are the same. So let's add some details. Let's talk about rates. Rate for the driving was 48 kilometers per hour. His rate walking home was 8 kilometers per hour. And then this is where it gets a little bit weird. <coughs> Excuse me. It says the drive took 10 minutes less than the walk home. So number one thing we have to contend with is that 10 minutes. Since we know that time needs to be in hours because of the rate label, we're going to need to convert minutes into hours by using 1 hour 60 minutes. And we get 1 sixth of an hour. Okay. Next, we have two unknowns. when it comes to time. But we look at the sentence that talks about the two times together and that's the one that says the drive took 10 minutes less than the walk home. Since the walk home is mentioned last, we've been talking about, that's who gets to be the variable. And if you notice, the question asks how far did he walk and for how long did he walk? So that makes double sense to let time for the walk be x. Now, to get time for the drive, it took him less time to drive than walk. So we're going to take his walk time and take away the 10 minutes or one sixth of an hour. Okay? All right, let's do our chart. So we have a drive portion and we have a walk portion. Rate, time, distance. Rate for driving was 48. Time, x minus 1, 6. And remember, rate times time equals distance to give us 48 times the quantity x minus 1, 6. The walking took a rate of 8 and a time of x for a total of 8x. All right, since the two distances are the same, I'm going to set them up. And if I go this direction, I've got my bigger x on the left. So I don't have to deal with negatives. So 48 times x is 48x. 48 times negative 1, 6 is negative 8 equals 8x. I'm going to subtract 8x from both sides to get them on the left. I'm going to add 8 to both sides to get the constants on the right. I get 40x equals 8 divide by 40, and we get x equals 1 fifth. Now, we have two ways to write this out, answer, and as far as I'm concerned, the way that you see it here works for me. So, how long did he walk? That's the first answer we get. Well, he walked for 1 fifth of an hour. The question then asked, well, how far did he walk? So what we're going to do is take the time for walking and substitute it into 
the distance for walking. So I'm going to do that over here on the left, and I get 8 times 1 fifth equals 8 fifths. And again, because this is a distance, a measurement of some kind, best to write it as a mixed number. 5 goes into 8 once with 3 left over. So his distance was 1 and 3 fifths. And we just look over at the um, rate to see what they measured in, and they measured in kilometers. And we write kilometers. And there's your answers. All right, good luck.